All right, hello. Earlier, I did the three-game retrospective look at the Game Boy Color remakes of the first three Dragon Quest games. Now, as a direct follow-up to that, those same games given the Super Nintendo treatment. Only difference other than console is the fact that the Game Boy Color ones were released here in North America, whereas the SNES never was. These are ne the SNES versions never were. What you're looking at is fan-translated ROMs. Otherwise, they'd still be in Japanese, which if you could read Japanese, is all fine and well, but... Begin new game. As usual, give him my name, as I usually do in RPGs, unless they already have an in-game default name. Of course, another reason for doing this video is to announce that my Dragon Quest IX playthrough has hit an unexpected roadblock of sorts. Yeah. Gotta do some extra grinding. Probably gonna... Yeah. Could be doing that right now instead of doing this video, but... Yeah. That and the fact that I'm slowly losing interest in Dragon Quest IX. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I mean, I know some of the people I talk to in Twitch streams, and therefore some of the people that might be watching this video love Dragon Quest IX. Like, uh, Crystal Time Gear, Twitch streamer, considers it one of the best, not only one of the best Dragon Quest games, but one of the best video games of all time, period. Sorry, Crystal, you're right to your opinion, my friend, but I strongly disagree. In my opinion, Dragon Quest IX is turning out to be one of the worst games ever made, but... Of course, a lot of the annoyances, you know, yeah. Maybe I need to look more into changing job classes and doing some of the side quests and leveling up some of those skill facts, you know, using skill points and leveling up some of those other skill claps. Yeah. So it might be more my own stupidity than the game's fault. Yeah, but still, point being, it's going to be a while before I get back to Dragon Quest Nine, at least the way I'm feeling right now. But anyways, more about that later. For now, Evil King Dragon, not the Dragon Lord. Okay. Of course, graphically, this looks like the uh, Super Nintendo version of Dragon Quest uh, 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 5. Which, by the way, is another reason I'm going to put a hold on Dragon Quest 9 for right now and get a start on Dragon Quest 5. Looks like the contents of these chests are still the same. Yep. They didn't change that even here or the Switch version of the game either. Of course, I can't show them on, on screen. I have no way of capturing those games. I can play them just fine, but I just don't have a capture card. Price is still the same. Yep, pretty much. In fact, entirely. And it still auto equips. Okay. Don't have enough for the leather clothes. Leathers, yes. Plain clothes. Oh, it doesn't auto equip you. Okay, never mind. I had to select. Okay, pay attention, me. 
Okay, it's a small little thing, but I think I pointed it out already, but in the NES version, your graphics sprite there is not seen with the shield until you buy one and equip one. Then, after that, you're seen with the shield here. Yeah. I don't know, it just, it's a little gripey little nitpick, I suppose, but still, it just added more to the playthrough, or however you want to put that. Just little touches like that, you know, they didn't, you didn't have a shield until you actually bought one. So far, out of all of these remakes and out of all these versions of this game I've played, only the NES original has that. All of the remakes, you already have a shield even though you haven't purchased one or equipped one yet. Again, it's a small little thing. It's definitely not a game-breaking thing. But, yeah. Okay, they're still called Red Slimes. Of course, this is a fan translation, so you know, officially this might have been when they started calling them she slimes in Japan. Because we didn't get another officially translated game in America until Part 7 on the Sony PlayStation. By then, I think they were already calling them she slimes. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying. Dragon Quest 9. I mean, I will eventually complete that game. I mean, I, I hate starting a playthrough that I'm not going to complete. I hate when other you know, YouTubers have done that over the years. It's like, where's the rest of the game, man? So I will get around to completing that game sometime. Just for now, like immediately after this video, I'm going to start recording Dragon Quest 5. I think that's part of my problem with 9, why I'm not enjoying part 9 as much as I should be. Too eager to start part 5. All I can think about is Dragon Quest 5, even right now playing this actually. I mean like I just rewind the video back to earlier, I even commented that the graphics in the King's Throne Room remind me of the SNES version of Dragon Quest 5. See what I mean? <coughs> Been putting off Dragon Quest 5 for long enough. Wanted to try to finish nine before I started a new one, but <coughs> <coughs> eh. With the amount of grinding and all that that I'm gonna have to do in part nine, that's gonna take a long time. So yeah. Of course, listen to me talk about all these right now future plans. Yeah, if somebody's watching this video a couple of years down the road, they'll be like, What are you talking about? All of those games have already been done. You did those playthroughs last year. Or something like that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, 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 oh hit points. For a second, I thought that said level 8. I was going to say, whoa, what? how did I get to experience, experience level 8 already? <coughs> <coughs> Dang it. Sorry. Okay. Now, the question I find myself asking every time I play a new version of this game for the first time is, is the experience table still the same? Uh, well, we'll find out in seven more experience levels, or spirit points, 23 points needed for level three. At least it's been in every version of the game I've played up until now, which is only, what, three of them? The original, Game Boy Color, and Switch. Now this one, but... <coughs> 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 
so far about the only noticeable difference, other than the graphics, of course, is that business with the Dragon Lord now being called the Dragon King. Well, that and the fact that when you buy weapons and our armor, they don't auto-equip like they did in the original. But... Actually, ask if you want to equip it. Okay. Didn't do that in the NES original, just automatically equipped it. And offered to buy back what you already had at half the original purchase price, so you didn't have to do this. Ah, uh, yeah. Might as well, as usual, whenever, whether it's the Switch or the NES version of the game. By the time I get to the point where I'm going to need this, I usually have the Radiant or Glow spell. Here. Sell the torch. Not gonna need it anyways. Eh, never mind. Yeah, so far it looks like like a good remake or remaster taking the NES original and putting it into a Super Nintendo game, turning it into one, whatever. Gonna get my butt kicked down here, but just out of curiosity, one thing I noticed about the Game Boy Color version of the game, in fact, I remember talking about that for a couple minutes in my review of, or my playthrough, brief playthrough of the Game Boy Color version of this game. Just out of curiosity, I want to see something. Red slimes down here. Again, I'm probably going to regret this in terms of enemy difficulty, but... Yeah, don't look like... Looks like they took it out of this version of the game, too. Hey, you're still just getting slimes and red slimes down here. Or was that just something they added to the Switch version? Am I crazy? Or wasn't that in the original too? Where you can get Magidrakis or Scorpions, level 1 Scorpions, or Ghosts down here in this bottom level of this bottom row here. That was in the original too, wasn't it? Granted, and I just played through the original earlier this year, and I already forgot that. Maybe that was just added to the Switch version of the game to help make grinding easier. Like how they drastically, you know, how all, all the enemies give you more gold and experience regardless of where you defeat them at. Maybe adding stronger enemies that earlier in the game is just a quality of life upgrade in the Switch only. Hold on. Just to satisfy my own curiosity in that regard, I'll be right back. Alright. Hello. Back to the NES version, original, for a second. Oh. For a minute, if you want to be literal and technical, it's already been a second. Ha ha ha. Funny. But seriously, though. Okay, down here. So I know in the Switch version of the game, you can get friggin' Magidrakis and... Yeah, okay, it is in the original. I thought so. I wasn't imagining things. But it's not in the Game Boy Color remake I showed briefly earlier, or the SNES remake that I'm currently paused. 
And they took it out of those two remakes. Why? I kind of like that about the original version of the game or the Switch remake where they put it back in again. So in this regard, the Switch version is the best. So far. Well, the NES original and the Switch version. But the Game Boy Color and the Super Nintendo remake, at least for this regard, stink. I mean, again, it's a small little mini gripe that's, for some people, would be hardly worth complaining about. But I like, once you're at level 4 and have the Hurt or Sizz spell, and can take on most of these enemies with one use of it, you know, quick way to level up a couple of levels, get enough money to buy the copper sword, or small shield, or anything. Back to the SNES version again. So, yeah. I don't know why they took that out. Seems like a stupid thing to remove, too. I mean. <coughs> <coughs> well, were too many people going down there too early and getting killed as a result and then cursing at the game and cursing the developers? For... So now they're trying to correct that? I mean, I doubt that's it, but. It's the only explanation I can think of. Well, the end here only costs three bucks. In the original, it's six. Again, it's a small little gripe, but early on it made grinding the first few levels up, you know, well. <coughs> From like levels four to seven are extremely easy. I mean, again, I wouldn't recommend, even if it was still an option, I wouldn't recommend going down there and fighting enemies down there until you're at least experienced level 4 and have the hurt slash sizz spell. <coughs> Where you can take most of them out in one use of it. Two at the most. But yeah, I just don't get why, of all the things to change or take out, why that? probably got, you know, there's probably some technical explanation like enemy domain borders due to the scaling of the world map slightly changed or some technical explanation like that, but still. You know, enemy domain borders like in the first Final Fantasy game in the infamous Power Peninsula or Peninsula of Power. That little peninsula pointing upwards, northeast of Provoca, Provaca, whatever, however you pronounce that. Or because of the enemy domain bordering the top two squares, top two tiers of it, can fight enemies from the northern continent. That kind of thing. Maybe it's got something to do with that. Different version of the game, different scaling of the world map, slightly changed the enemy domain borders. No, it's called the Fireball Spell. I mean, I'll be honest, it is a better name than Hurt. You know, I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna cast the Hurt. Yeah, just sounded kind of generic. Even then, I mean, we used to laugh at the. You know, Don't make me use my Hurt spell. And then later in the game, oh, it's Hurt more. You know, yes. Yeah. Hey, who was? That? Who was that? Oh yeah, okay, granted that was years later, but we didn't think of it at the time, because that game didn't exist yet, but in 1998 there was a game on the Sony PlayStation, Metal Gear Solid. One of the bosses, every time you hurt, hit him, he was like, hurt me more! 
that's the kind of thing we would have been saying, would have been saying back in the day had that. Again, we, no, I'm not saying we were, that would have been involved time travel. You know, we're talk, I'm talking the early 90s, that game didn't come out until 98, so obviously we weren't referencing that yet. Hurt more! Anyways, yeah. So again, this looks... Other than that little business with the enemies down south of here. Looks like a pretty good version of the game. Granted, I've barely touched, you know, as far as progression goes. Looks like a solid candidate for another playthrough sometime down the road once I've done 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, Final Fantasy 5, Final Fantasy 3, or not 3, yeah, 6, 2, and eventually 3, but yeah. so many other games to do before I start doing original versions of ones I've already done the remake of, or remakes of the original in this case, remakes of ones I've already done the original of. Of course, when I said that the other way around, I was also thinking about sometime doing a playthrough of the Zero Mission remake of the first Metroid game. Even though I've already done a one video playthrough of the, first, the original of the first Metroid game. Thinking about someday soon going back and doing the Zero Mission playthrough, but... <coughs> <coughs> For now, i got enough other games to play that I haven't played yet. So, yeah, looks like a good game. I don't know why they didn't release it in America. They wanted to come out in Japan. That's actually a good question. December of 1993, according to the Wikipedia article on it. Yeah, I looked it up when I had the video paused, just out of curiosity. Yeah, December of 93. I guess I was already, yeah, since part... Four came out on the NES in ninety two late ninety two. Yeah, I guess by by late ninety three Enix had made the fateful decision to basically flip, flip America the middle finger in terms of releasing their games here. So we didn't even get remakes of the ones that we already had the originals of. Let alone new games like five or six. And again I know I harp on that all the time. But yeah. And I'm sure I'll go into detail on that, you know, talk about, well, maybe not go into detail, but mention that again in video one for my Dragon Quest V playthrough, because it's just always been one of those things that bugged me. How much I would have loved playing a game as good as Dragon Quest V is, how much I would have loved being able to have played that in the mid 90 early mid 90s. I mean, Part 5 came out in Japan in 92. Had Enix not, theoretically speaking, flipped America the middle finger, we probably would have gotten an Americanized, localized, translated version of it by 95. Now, granted, I don't know how long it would have taken to translate a game like that. Still, you know, it would have been nice, but no. Or, by the way, I said Square earlier. I meant Enix. Square wasn't involved with Dragon Quest until the merger in 2003. My bad there, but yeah. Anyways, I suppose since part two is on the... Reset, where is it? There it is. Since this does include two... Actually, I'm not even going to bother giving them a full name, since this isn't a full playthrough. Okay, what? Is this the... Okay, oh, okay, that's right, it's the description about... 
events since the end of the first game, okay? Still being called the Dragon King, not the Dragon Lord. But again, of course, that could be chalked up to fan translation here, since this is a, you know, since this is a fan translation. I mean, I'm glad they did that, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking them. It's great that somebody liked the game enough to translate it. I'm just saying, you know, even the fan translators can be wrong. Even fan translations can make mistakes. That's all I'm saying there. I mean, again, it's great, marvelous that people take the time to translate these games that were never released in North America officially. So that we can at least play an emulated version of them. Okay, this scene is still there in this remake. So I guess, you know, maybe it was a NES thing, you know, Enix didn't include it in the original NES version of the game due to some memory reason. I doubt that would be the case, but I mean, it's in the Game Boy Color remake of the game, which was released in America, but it's also here. This this was never released in America, so I can't imagine this was just added to the American... What American version could this have been added to? Yeah. So obviously they put this in there for the Japanese version of this game, too. Her name is going to be Maria. Dang it, that's one thing I like about the Switch version of the game. They give you the option to select your own names for the... Well, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't played the game. The princess that you see here. And the prince of another country. Again, spoiler alert, I guess. Ooh! He swore. Obviously, that I doubt that was the original intended... Well, maybe, you know, for Japan, yeah. since Japanese developer or Japanese gaming companies didn't seem to have such a lack of tolerance for foul language as the North uh, Nintendo of America did at the time. A lot of swearing was cut out. Which for parents was a great thing, you know. I mean, I lost count of how many times my mom would yell out from the, her room at the top of the steps when I'd be sitting, sitting in the living room playing my NES as a teenager. Hey, you watch your mouth or you're shutting that game off. Be cursing at the game, playing Castlevania or Ghosts and Goblins and dying for the dozenth time. Oh, you mother... Mm. Only I wouldn't be censoring myself. I'd be yelling over vulgarities. And mother would be, hey, yeah, yeah, you get the idea. Anyways, personal flashback memories aside, other than a slight visual enhancement from the NES original, going from six from 8-bit to 16-bit, pretty much the same. Of course, the other thing I noticed, like I said in my Game Boy Color video on these games, dialogue text box. In the scene coming up as soon as he gets to the throne room here. Okay, worded slightly different, but basically the same implication. still the same, except for the E at the end. Moonbrook is still the same. Why did they change Middenhall into Larasia? Oh, well. Anyways. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, they don't mention. Okay. Sorry, I had to rewatch. I had to watch the video. Yeah, they did mention in the dialogue in this version of the game that Paragon has summoned a dark god of great power. Seems like the only version of the game where they did mention that is the NES original. Where you didn't hear about Hargon or about Melroth as he's na his name was originally was. Until Hargon mentioned him for defeating him. Hargon was billed as the final boss. You heard nothing. I mean, granted, if you were, you had a little bit of insight, you know, you get the item that was originally called the Eye of Melroth, and you might have, okay, who's Melroth? But you know, other than that, there was no indication about a boss <coughs> you know, other than Hargon. But in all of these remakes, including the Switch, they hit that heart at Mel Roth from the beginning. Granted, they don't mention him by name. Just some dark god of great power that would lay waste to the entire world. Yeah, just again, it just seems kind of. I guess maybe they realized you know, that that they should have mentioned it originally. But I mean, personally, I didn't mind. You know, to add it. Granted, you know. On a first playthrough, you're not expecting. Hargon is supposed to be the end battle, so. Then he. Hey, who's this guy? Get another boss so so soon and unexpectedly. Can be kind of annoying, but. Of course, that's with any game, not just this one. And again, only 50 gold. So, Matria. So, that's what they call Kanok in this game? So, okay. Is that official canon or is that fan translation mess up? Either way, screw that. Kanok is much better. I don't know, maybe I'm just overly nostalgic for the original or the Switch. But... Anyways, let's get out and fight. Okay, speaking of the Switch version of the game. Yeah, that's another thing. Only the NES original does not have the leather shield here. Seems like all of the other remakes, the Game Boy Color, this one, the Switch version. I'll have a leather shield for sale here. Hmm. Huh. Okay, let's not wander too far north like I did in my Game Boy Color video. Oh shoot, I forgot to... I'm an idiot. I'm a moron. I forgot to equip my sword. Ah, screw it. This is hate running from slimes of all things, but oh, okay, there. Let's just say, where's the equip option here? Okay, there, that's better. Again, I hate running from slimes of all enemies, but. That battle was taken forever. Hmm. Okay. No random battle. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Should be able to one-shot slimes. 
they're customarily the weakest enemy in the entire game. Alright. Well. Again, looks like a solid remake. One that I might do very well do a playthrough of sometime in the next year or two. After completing all of the other games I want to do first. But, yeah, for now, of course, this one, unfortunately, will, will require emulation. I mean, the Game Boy Color games, you know, if you have the Game Boy, you know, if you have the Game Boy Color and can find the cartridge in mean, there, you can actually play authentically on, you know, on genuine hardware, but here, well, I mean, I suppose you might be able to get a copy of the Super Nintendo online just it wouldn't be translated so if you didn't speak jet speak or read Japanese you know you... anyways thanks for watching and now for me it is time to record video one of Dragon Quest 5 been putting that off for too long so see ya for that And as always, thanks for watching, and bye. Oh, wrong.